Good afternoon. As we've seen over the course of the Future Schools Conference, some classrooms today are awash with technology. And we can clearly see from the expo out behind us that there's clearly going to be more on the way. Early adopters are grabbing hold of this stuff. They're getting stuck straight into the 3D printers, the laser cutters, the drones, the robotics, etc. But really, how are we going to actually leverage this technology to really deepen student learning experiences? And really today, we're going to be looking at the relationship uh, between the teachers and the tech and bridging that gap. My name's Cameron Nichols. As introduced, um, I was assistant principal at Warrigal Regional College. I've recently had a change of scenery and now gone to chase the little kids in the primary sector, which has been really interesting for me. And I have the pleasure of introducing our distinguished panel guests as we unpack the topic, how ICT directors and network managers best support teachers and principals and vice versa. Beginning with Mary Louise O'Brien. She's the chief digital officer at Melbourne Girls Grammar. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Mary is one of Australia's internet pioneers, starting Australia's first online retail business in 1998. Mary Louise has worked at Swinburne University as an e-learning leader for the School of Business, a course convener and lecturer of e-marketing, e-commerce, change management and e-business systems. She moved to Melbourne Girls Grammar in 2009 and has recently taken up the role as Chief Digital Officer. Welcome. Thank you. Matthew Robinson is Operations Manager at Lawana College. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Matt Robinson is co-founder of the Education Technology Consortium Victoria, and as such leads collaboration between IT managers and curriculum leaders, driving some of Victoria's most innovative school IT programs. As the consortium bridges the gap between teachers and tech to build a cult tech to build a culture of confidence in the use of IT to improve school outcomes. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Cameron. Chris Waldhouse. Nice. Welcome. Thank you. Chris is Assistant Principal uh, Student Opportunities at Northern Beaches Christian School. As part of the senior leadership team at Northern Beaches Christian School, Chris's role is to lead the Student Opportunities Program. He oversees the development of a student and staff passion-driven passion camp program. And with a background of over 25 years in technology education, Chris is, an enthousi is enthusiastic about expanding the potential of tech to enhance learning. Welcome. And we welcome back Helena Tully. Hey. Welcome again. For those that missed Helena's presentation just a moment ago, she is a teacher member of the Queensland Tech Brecky crew from Mundingburra State School. Helena is a senior primary school teacher in Northern Queensland. She has a passion for te technology, literacy and all things creative and over the past few years has been involved in online global collaboration projects that have significantly enhanced student learning opportunities. Can I ask you to make the whole panel welcome once again? Thank you. So as we unpack this, topic of how we IT managers and leaders can support our STEM educators in schools, I thought I might spring, and it really literally is spring because we really haven't had much time to talk about this, if at all, <laughs> and Mary and I have only just met, a bit of a hypothetical. So I might begin with Chris, if I may. Behind us we have a conference, and there are a number of these conferences that are run around the world, and there's lots of what I describe as shiny new things out there. Yep. So in this hypothetical, one of your staff has come to you with a proposal for the use of 40 robots in the class, and they want you to buy these 40 new robots. And they say that these 40 new robots, these new pieces of tech, are the next thing for improving student outcomes at your school. Chris, what would these STEM educators need to say to you to convince you that these robots are worth adding to your curriculum? A good question. I think we've probably uh, come across something like that uh, in, in many ways. Uh, the first thing I'd say is uh, excellent get one. Uh, we'd, we'd get one as soon as we could, get them straight into the hands of the teachers and say, play with it, do it, do what you think um, you'd want the students to be doing. Go through the experience. Um, there, are, there are lots of devices and tools out there. Some of them are very open. Um, some of them are very open and complex. Some of them are really simple and narrow, uh, and there's ones all in between. You've really got to get a taste of what, what do they have an idea of what that project is going to look like, what's the, what's the tool going to give them. 
uh, how far can they take it? Um, and, and I suppose in the longer term, I'm looking for how is this really going to uh, allow the students to, to broaden the scope of what they learn? Is it, is it an entry level thing that they, they use to get started and, and then they move on? Or is this the, the tool that they're going to, uh, that's going to open their world? Um, so get in there, they've got to play with it, they've got to experience what they think the students will experience and then how will they modify their curriculum essentially. To, sure. Uh, so, Chris has invited the teachers to get a couple of these into their rooms, and they're doing that, and it seems quite successful. And they're they're saying it's certainly making the learning fun and engaging and inspiring. It's certainly highly practical. It's um, giving them a head start in, into perhaps other technologies and a bit of a familiarity working with these robots, which they can see links to to future direction. Mary, if I could throw to you. Uh, Mary Louise, what else do ICT directors and network managers need from these STEM educators before you'd be willing to support Chris and his teachers to have these robots in your classrooms? Yeah, absolutely. And Mary Lou's fine, a little bit Thank shorter you. for you. Um, I'd be asking them what's the lifespan, um, who's going to support this technology in the, the classroom, what technical support might be needed in the, the back end software questions. Um, they're probably the main things that we'd want to know for a big picture overview. Um, and you know, obviously, we'd want it to work too. If there's certainly going to be benefit to the students, we want to know and have that justified. So how might either of you, uh, Chris or Mary Lou, know if this was actually working? What are the success indicators that you'd be looking for to know that these robots are actually getting the, the bang for their buck in the classroom mm. in terms of learning? One of the things uh, I can't remember, I think it was Milton might have mentioned, uh, if, if the students are, are running in faster than they're running out, yeah. it, it becomes quite clear that, that y y it gets down to uh, students not getting to where they need to be because they're, they're wanting to stay back. The, the staff who, who have that experience where something is that engaging and is actually achieving the outcome, it's, it's quite clear. And so they're very keen to, to report back and share and have other people come and visit them. So. From my perspective, it would be quite clear when it's a success. Sure. I would also say student engagement. Yeah. Anything that can engage students gets the thumbs up. Right. Mm. So, Matt, it's got the support of the school leaders and the curriculum leaders. As an IT manager in the school, you've just got the good news that the shipment's arrived, and here are 40 new robots that have landed in your class or in your office, ready for deployment. And the teachers have said all they need is internet access, strong wireless, perhaps access to the student and teacher's shared resources online. What else might you need from the STEM educators or what support or what questions might you have for them before you're ready to go into the classroom? And the big idea they're asking you is, or the big question is, how long do we can start using them? What would you say? Well, the first thing is I'd have to get off the floor from the shock of all the new robots coming in and trying to work out when I can actually fit it into my, uh, my schedule. No, no, the curriculum has to drive the technology. Too long it's been the technology driving that curriculum. And now, having that curriculum come in, I'm going to be very excited about it. Everyone's passionate, everyone's on this high of the new robots coming in. And one of the biggest things is I get my text to take one home and play with it that day. Go home, play with it, break it. If you do, we'll just order another one, not a problem. Get it into the hands of my techs and myself. I'd go home, give it to my kids, play with it. I'll give you two days. And within two days, I would have a teacher PD probably up and running in, the, in the, probably the professional learning teams to start with instead of doing a whole school uh, model because obviously when you're trying to teach 100 teachers how to use a robot, kind of doesn't work. Um, so that's, that's how we sort of break it down. And then from that, I would choose certain those early adopter teachers to say, okay, if you want to run it in your class, say in two days time, period four, let me know and a team of us will come over there and actually, like Blake said, build that confidence with them, with the teachers. Okay, what went wrong? What's going to work? What's not going to work? Support the students, support the staff but also while we're there, teach the students, well, if this doesn't work, this is what you can do. So, Helena, unbeknownst to everybody that was actually starting this project, they, these robots actually tap out to the net and they've downloaded some updates and some additional content. And so these devices are now um, are doing some collaborative, they're able to be used collaboratively online and they're tweeting out occasionally about where they're rolling across the floor and, and what they're doing. What might we need to do to additionally support these teachers uh, with this new collaborative space online? Well, firstly, um, your teachers need to be 
trained in how their collaborative space works. Um, people won't use a collaborative space, they won't use new things unless they know how to do it. So PD is essential for teachers. And not only that, I, I find mentoring is a really good strategy. So you find your strong teachers within the school who are willing to share, and most people are willing to share. Um, a lot of the kids have a lot of knowledge as well. So often I'll get students who have that digital knowledge um, to share that to teachers as well. It's a, it's a whole new way of thinking, but um, often teachers are quite receptive to that as well. Um, so that's, that would be essential part of it. So yeah. the program's going quite well. We've got them well supported uh, by Matthew and, and his team, and we've certainly got uh, the support from the curriculum leaders. It's up and running in some classes, but we'd really like to see this scale across the curriculum more broadly. We often see that the tech sits with those early adopters. I'll just open to the panel. Yeah. What experience have you had in taking some of these, these tech projects and then embedding them into the culture of using technology in schools? Do you have any examples of where you might have done similar things? I might mention uh, one of the things I do, and, and Helena uh, just uh, kind of mentioned it, is get it into the hands of the students and let them drive the process. Uh, certainly, if you want to get it across the curriculum, one of the ways to get it across to teachers and to identify the need if a teacher doesn't see that themselves is to have the students come in and say, why aren't we using this in my class? I can see the need for it here or I can use it here or you've set a task and you've asked me to do this. I want to use the, the robots to do that. And, and in that way, they, they infiltrate the, the, the pedagogy and drive some of the pedagogy from their perspective. And the other way is, you know, Matt, Matt's talked about an awesome support system for staff. Um, growing that out to students and if it was me I'd start a student team that supported those robots and then looked for opportunities to to draw others within, within the school into it. Yeah just just on that too but what we found too at Luana College especially if I've got any new gear coming in I know I've got probably the top 20 kids who are my IT kids will come in and say good day because we're a bunch of nice guys and um, what's new today Matt I'll try this Chromebook for example I'll try this GoPro or whatever let me know like put it in the hands of them and then report back to me. They love that, that's their, that's their, then when they're in class and the staff members using that new robot, oh miss, I know how to use that. I can help you and so, so top, top bottom up approach, yeah. Thank you. Mary Lou, you spoke about the sustainability of these tech projects over time and often with, with any of these particularly new products that we use, they often have a finite lifespan as the new model or the new thing comes along. What do we do as tech leaders in schools to sustain the program and take it to the next level beyond the life of the current technology? I think it's about forward planning and, and knowing and expecting that to happen and occur. So it is about thinking strategically, thinking ahead and, and making those budget decisions early. Um, we try and do all our planning at least five years out, which is very hard in, with technology because it's changing so quickly. Um, but where we can, that's where we're trying to, to pitch all the time. And I suppose on the infrastructure so side of things, Matt, as more and more technology comes on and we think of the internet things, yeah. that it's no longer just the computers in your classrooms anymore. We're now talking about the TVs falling within the remit of the IT leaders, the water coolers, the fridges. <laughs> so. What needs to happen infrastructure-wise to support uh, the new environments, the new learning environments in our schools? Uh, more coffee for the <laughs> IT team. Um, the infrastructure, like, as um, Blake mentioned in his, in his other presentation, was is that growth. Obviously, the more tech you put in, the more support you need, the more, obviously, internet you need to support those internet of things. And it's also PD for us as IT guys. We're constantly being um, thrown all this new tech. We've got to learn this at a rapid rate, obviously, because we don't want the kids to miss out. So we're constantly, the infrastructure, um, trying to grow it five years out, you've got to have that plan. You've got to have, okay, our internet will be at 400 megabit this year, next year, we know we're getting all this new tech, it's got to be 600 and have a look at that. And that's, that's just a planning process and take your time. And I guess the added layer on, which is by no means the final piece, is I guess how do we communicate to our parents about what we're doing in our, in our schools and where does that fit? What do we need to do as ICT leaders to actually uh, share with our parents and our students and our communities about what these learning programs are so that they understand they're, they're not just playing with toys. Helena, do you have anything to add there? We, um, yep, I, I, I've set up a platform so that parents can communicate, but we also do a program at our school 
where parents are invited in in the afternoon. It's called Science Mates, and parents come in and they actually see um, kids working. For example, this term we did Arduinos, um, and it's really good because you you have the chance there to talk to the parents about what they're actually doing and how it all works, and they, they're realizing how complicated these processes are. So, so not only do we offer the sort of digital communication form, we do hands-on in our school that parents can actually come in to the classes. So that's, that's pretty exciting as well. And they find that really, really valuable. Right. And I think one of the things that's exciting about conferences, conferences like this is the ability to uh, bring sort of the, the technical specialists and the teaching specialists together. So I'm sure for this hypothetical robot project, it's gone really well because for all the staff that are out there using these robots, they've been able to meet people today, they've made those networks, they've found the support, and after they leave today, they'll call each other up and they'll say, Matt, help me with the IT, uh, uh, Mary Lou, uh, Chris, help me, um, Helena, help me with the, the learning agenda and let's put all this together and make it work for our students. Can I ask that we all put our hands together for our, our panellists today? Thank you very much. Mary Lou, Matt Robinson, Chris Wildhouse, and Helena Tully. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Cam.